required uh, reading here. Basically everybody fill this thing out, just save you time, just mark everything as excellent and then just turn it in. So, so but basically yeah, they value the attendee feedback and they want to improve the show so if I suck you can say that too, alright? Um, so otherwise, uh, my dad always tells me, he's like, you know, you go and you speak in front of all these people, but you're dressed like you're on the beach in sandals and, you know, you paint your toenails blue and all this crazy stuff. So the next time I think you should buy a suit. So I did. So, so today we're going to talk about Facebook advertising. And um, basically I call this from soup to nuts. My wife says, um, what the hell does soup to nuts mean? And to be honest with you, I don't know, but I've seen it used a lot, and I think it sounds pretty cool. So, I think it means from start to beginning, so we're going to go with that. Um, how many people in here are currently advertising with Facebook? Okay, awesome. How many people have tried to advertise, but they find it very frustrating? Okay, about the same amount. And how many people have never used Facebook advertising at all? Okay, so probably skip over some of the newbie stuff a little bit faster. Because it seems like a profit. And then we're going to take some live questions. <clears throat> so, some brief Facebook history. And now that I've worn my suit, I'm going to take it off a little bit because it's a little bit hot up here. Okay, so Zuckerberg, um, basically in October 28th of 2003, the story goes, his girlfriend broke up with him and so he was all pissy in his dorm room and hacked into what they call Facebooks at Harvard and stole all this data, people's images and you know their names and everything like that and created a site called FaceMash, Mash, which was a version of like basically Hot or Not where you could vote on who was better looking, okay? Um, he was arrested for it and was charged with like four different things. Uh, it was kind of a big deal and uh, he was later let go promising he wouldn't do it again. Uh, about six months later, he started a site called thefacebook.com because he knew there was a lot of money in uh, people's data and getting people all on board on one site and letting people you know share things and do all kinds of stuff with the face mash stuff um, then in March 2005 you have uh, facebook.com they acquired the name and then you have what you have today so very very brief history of Facebook so I've met Mark a couple times um, recently you know now that he's big time or he's pretty much unavailable to people like me but um, you know three years ago we were at a TechCrunch event and I was talking to him in the hallway and I asked him if I could get a picture with him and he said um, he looked actually looked over at somebody and they were like no and uh, so I was like okay well that's that's cool so I went to the bathroom and I'm in there and and Mark comes in and uh, he's peeing next to me and um, <laughs> He looks over and he says, hey, oh, hey, you know, I'm really sorry about that. My people are super protective. There's people that, like, take pictures of me and then, you know, exploit them, you know, and stuff like that. And <laughs> so um, I was like, it's cool, don't worry about it. And uh, he was like, 
but but it's cool if you want to take a picture. Do you want to do it right now? And I was like, well, can we finish peeing first? So that's my uh, that's my Mark Zuckerberg story. So what's Facebook's product? Like, who here knows what Facebook's actual core product is? What are they selling? Okay, nobody knows. Okay, well, it's you and all your data. That's Facebook's product, okay? So in order to keep that, they need to have, they have this following mindset, and it's all about keeping users' data, hoarding it, and um, keeping the growth on pace. So an astonishing fact is that 60% of the people on Facebook log in every single day, and there's something like 68% of the entire country of Denmark like has a Facebook account, and the stats just internationally are, are absolutely crazy. They've done an excellent job. Um, they want to hoard users' info, give very minimal public access to users' info like through an API or any sort of open standard. Um, they want to keep their venture capital investors happy and uh, you know, obtain as much personal data, data on users as possible. And they claim they want to keep the user experience very, very high, which adds to everything else. So Facebook advertiser history. Um, in 2007, they came on my radio show, and they were, they were lovey-dovey. And they, they were like four people. They all gave out their email addresses. Email us anytime, affiliates. We love you. If you have any questions, here's all of our email addresses. And, um, and in 2008, we started doing at the Affiliate Summit actual Facebook advertising panels. And they made the, uh, the actual uh, quote was, boy, affiliate marketers really know how to scale. And I thought that was a, a nice way to say uh, things. And then in, in 2009, they said affiliate marketers really know how to exploit holes and stuff because they had, you know, they would find little ways to do things and, and just, the thing about affiliate marketers are so creative and scaling actually is a, an, a great key word for it because we will, if we find something that's lucrative, we blow it up, you know, we automate it and you know, that's the way it works. And so Facebook was very naive and, and very inexperienced in this industry. So now in 2010, um, in personal talks with a lot of Facebook employees, they're like, affiliate marketers are our worst enemy. Um, you know, they have no direct relationship with a lot of the companies they're advertising, and they do horrible things with the data that they get, giving our users a bad experience, stuff like that, which this all goes against their mantra, right? So that's why I thought this was important to go over the Facebook stuff. They continually change rules all the time. A lot of affiliate marketers feel that the rule changes are directly aimed at them. Um, a lot of times they kind of are. Uh, just for an example, in March 10th of 2010, they said you can't advertise free stuff anymore. So what's free stuff? Well, it's this kind of thing where, you know, enter your zip code and get a free iPad or, you know, all this different kind of stuff like this. So they said no more of this. So what did affiliates do? Because after all, they had been working with these affiliates and they told them this was all okay to do. So a lot of affiliates, like affiliates do, they spend a lot of money and actually will lose money to get a campaign profitable. So a lot of people had been running this stuff, they're finally profitable, they've done all the legwork to get it going, got through all the frustrations, and now what do they do? Well, they do what a lot of good affiliate marketers do and they find a way to do it. So they started these free events, okay? So um, this was actually funny because I actually posted about how um, you can't advertise free stuff anymore. And I got an email from this kid who, which happens a lot actually, when I say you can't do something. And he's like, dude, I found a way to make, I've made over a quarter million bucks doing these things, but you can't tell anybody about it. But blah, 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 I'll give you more details. And then three days later, he emails me back. Okay, here's exactly how I did it. They banned me, so you can tell whoever you want. <laughs> And for whatever reason, that happens a lot. Like people will write me and they'll say, hey, I found this really cool trick. Here's exactly how to do it. So, and then, you know, a couple days later, it, the same things happen. So here's what he showed me he did. He created a free iPad event. Um, as you can see, there was 11,874 people had it, um, said they were gonna attend the event. And basically, when you just attend the event, you go to the actual free iPad page, which he gets like two bucks a person, okay? And this is when I took the screenshot. Um, there were 636 people waiting. Um, so that means that it went so viral that everyone was inviting their friends, okay? Um, so this thing went huge. Um, I checked it out with the networks. He did make over $250,000 in two or three days. 
So that's pretty cool. Ex you know, obviously 250 grand, no money spent on advertising at all. Um, it's pure profit, it's very creative but Facebook absolutely hates it and they will ban you in a second if you try to create an event to do this. So, but you can see why now the Facebook people are extremely frustrated with stuff like this. Because it goes, not only does it go completely against their mindset, but they don't even get paid for it now. Okay, so it's a double, double whammy to them. Their advertiser guidelines, honestly, I can go, there's nothing you can advertise where I can't tell you you can't do it because there's something in here that appears to the guidelines. The bottom line is this, like everyone else's guidelines, is just a catch-all for everything. If they don't like what you're doing, for whatever reason, you, you won't be able to do it, okay? Um, the same rules do not apply to everybody. Uh, the more money you spend, if you're a big company or a big brand, um, a lot of times you can skirt the rules completely. Just one little example I found when putting this together. Um, number 13, section A says, ads cannot offer incentives to viewers for clicking on the ad, for submitting personally identifiable information such as name, date of birth, phone number, social security number, physical address or email address, or performing any other tasks. Well, Chick-fil-A, you know, gives away free chicken biscuits if you uh, fill out this little form right here, which requires your address, your city and state, your zip code, and Facebook is just going to, because they have the information, they're just going to go ahead and give them your name and email, okay? And you get it, so obviously, this completely contradicts their policy. Big brands do this all the time, Johnsonville Bratwurst, you got to go to their site, you got to give them their email address, your everything. So, if you try to copy what other people are doing, and this goes even to like, even my stuff, like we see a lot of people copy our campaigns and stuff like that, and we just kind of laugh because we know they're probably not gonna get their ads approved because they don't have the history that we do. And also, you know, they don't get the payouts that we get and stuff like that. And, and the fastest way to lose money, I can tell you right now, is to take an actual ad that someone else is using and duplicate it and just blow your budget out. You will lose thousands of dollars as fast as possible. It is absolutely the dumbest thing to do. So don't be a copycat. Now, this sounds like Facebook advertising sucks, right? I mean, there's they don't improve ads, they don't wanna work with you, they think you're the devil. <coughs> it's also why it's a giant opportunity. The barrier to entry to Facebook advertising is enormous. I mean, from the get-go, you've, you've got everything set against you if you wanna start being an affiliate marketer in this and advertising on Facebook. They don't like you, you're associated, depending on what you're promoting, some things are really, really hard to do. Um, but it's a giant opportunity if you have the patience and you go through their hoops and you email their affiliates and you go back and forth with them and you get your stuff approved. It's a huge, huge opportunity. We've seen some opportunities in the past like this in Google early 2000s. I didn't have actually the financial means to really capitalize on that one. Um, I did a lot better in the mid 2000s with Yahoo search marketing. And then in like 2007, I think it was, we absolutely crushed it with Microsoft Ad Center. Each time these people went into this not really knowing what they're doing and they were willing to give a lot of leeway and a lot of free kind of, well, a lot of free leeway to let people do what they wanted to do and, and really just more get feedback and improve their systems and stuff like that. And it was really frustrating and hard to use their advertising systems, much like it is Facebook right now. But I'm telling you, you're gonna look back on this because when I talk about MSN Ad Center and how we would you know, spend $500 to make like eight grand you know, a day, you know, but it didn't last very long. But you know, there's opportunities like that on Facebook right now all the time. And people are gonna look back on that and be like, wow, I wish I would have you know, just had the patience to figure it out and to get going. So the opportunity is definitely there. So let's get to the nitty gritty. So a Facebook ad has three components. Um, you have the title, the image, and the body text. Not rocket science, I know a lot of you here have seen it before, so you've definitely seen that. And this is what the screen looks like when you actually create the ad. A lot of people ask us, you know, what do you focus most on when you create Facebook ads? We create sometimes, you know, 100 to 1,000 images, well, ads a day, okay? And I'll get more into that later. It depends on when we find something super hot, we do so much testing. 
So we focus 70% on the actual image, 10% um, on the title, and 20% on the body text. Now, there's, I have all kinds of scientific data. Uh, this is from my advertising, okay? So if you do your own test, you might find something different. But we find that no, what you, no matter what you put in the title, at most, it's gonna make a 10% difference. No matter what you put in the body text, at most, it's gonna make a 20% difference. The image will make a 70% difference, okay? And I'm gonna back that up with some stats here. So, let's talk about images, because I think images is the most important thing. Um, in 2004, Google hired Millward Brown, who's an independent research firm, who does all of Google. Actually, if you actually Google, Google has tons of research docs, and if you ever are bored, you can read through them, and this is one I found some real gems in. So in 2004, Google was looking at doing image ads. Remember, they used to just have this ad text, ad sense stuff, so they're looking at doing image ads. So they hired Millward Brown. They got 2,000 people in there um, for two weeks, 1,000 men, 1,000 women, and they showed them just random image ads, and they said, you know, click on whatever you like. So there was over 10 million ads clicked, and the results were pretty interesting. About 75%, number one was cleavage. Anytime there was cleavage shown, it was clicked on. Okay, so 75% of the time. I think, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, recognizable brands was about 10%. 10% was, you know, images that blended in with the page or looked like they were part of the page. And then everything else was like 5%. So 75% cleavage, crazy. There's actually another, there's a CNET study that has exactly the same results. So number one, cleavage, number two, and they, call, they keep calling it cleavage, but I think, I'm just gonna be honest, I think it's boobs, okay? And I think they just say cleavage because it sounds nicer or whatever, but you know, okay. So I thought, I wonder how this applies to Facebook. And some of you might remember this on my blog. I said, I need your guys' help. What I'd like you to do is go to your ad board, take a screenshot of it, and send it to me. And a lot of you did. I got hundreds and hundreds of actual ad boards because I wanted to actually put up ads and ask people, much like Google did, to actually click on these, whatever interests you. Because I want to see, I want to see what people are doing. So I basically created this case study and I set up five different pages of ads um, that were actually Facebook ad board ads. And you know, we just had, here's page two, page three, and so on. So I used Clicktail to record the results. And um, right now it's actually supposed to show you a movie that actually shows Clicktail. And if, if you haven't used Clicktail, you can go to the site and see what it does. But basically, it records the actual screen of the user and what they do. So you can see mouse movements, what people are clicking on. You can see if they're tabbing or hitting return, anything like that. So basically, Clicktail, super cool. You should check it out. Um, so Clicktail for this Facebook test recorded you know, 233,000 recordings. There was, um, I emailed out to my email list and blogged and tweeted and Facebooked and got um, thousands and thousands of people take part in this test. All different, you know, all different countries, all different, um, you know, just everywhere, all different sexes, everything. So, uh, basically, this is where the movie would be if it played. Um, and so here's the results of my case study. So here's like the heat map, right, of where people clicked on the first one. Um, as you can see, everybody liked the girl right there over 61% of the people. Now, keep in mind, there's 20 ads on this ad board, okay? So this, so this girl got more than all of their ads combined, all right? Now, you might say, yeah, but it's a marketing ad, your conference is marketing, well, all of these are marketing things. I mean, there's an SEO one there, there's another marketing thing, there's an entrepreneur thing. So, I mean, it's all the same category. So, I actually have a remote thing. So the results, 61% of all clicks, more than everything else. Um, this is the actual ad. So uh, the other one, this one got 48% of the clicks on the page. This is Now keep in mind, 20 ads are on this page. And that's that ad. Um, this girl right here is actually somewhat famous with marketers, and I can see some people laughing who've seen. This girl is known as the gray shirt girl. Um, is used in a lot of dating ads and stuff like that, does, just gets an enormous amount of clicks. Um, for whatever reason, I don't have any idea why, but um, it just, it gets a lot, a lot, a lot of clicks. So, 
that's the actual image right there. So I thought, what if I put, so then I just, I copied these image and I just started rearranging. And since people sent me stuff from all different countries, I actually had all different ads from all different countries. So I thought, what if for, for people coming from the US, I show them an ad board of nothing but US images, but I take one of these girls and I just put a random other foreign text on the page. What would happen? Well, 49, it's still got 49%, so almost still more than every other ad that was still in English to people in the US still clicked on that ad. So the whole point of this isn't, well, it's two things. One, it validates the Google study, that cleavage, um, or whatever you want to call it, it, is basically the number one thing that people click on, just by far and away. Um, we've, we've done 20 different verticals every time cleavage wins, okay? So the ad click distribution, I call it boobs, they call it cleavage, whatever you want to call it. It is what it is. Okay, so we found basically the same thing, about 70% um, on the on the whole, 60-70% uh, was boobs, brands, and the rest fell in there somewhere. So, remember the, the shoe money Facebook factor that we use? 70%, and this whole thing is just to get you to understand like images is everything. So like once you get your image to a decent click through, then focus on the title and focus on the description body, okay? So let's talk about those things. Now if you're sitting here and you have no clue what you could possibly use for a title or a body description, I highly recommend picking up, picking up some basic sales copywriting books. Um, there's a guy named John Carlton who writes some excellent stuff. Um, you can also just Google and, and find a ton of stuff as well. I'm gonna show you some exact stuff that we do. Um, and this is jacked up my slide a little bit, but that's cool. So basically, number one is a call to action. And everyone I've ever talked to agrees with this. If you don't tell people what to do, they're not gonna go for it. Um, association is huge. If you can find a way to associate with a big brand or company that you're advertising for, you know, if you're if you're doing anything for Blockbuster, then make sure you mention Blockbuster in the title of your of your thing. I'm not saying use it in the image. I'm saying use it in the title. Okay, um, the look and feel of the of Facebook. If you can find a way to incorporate that, it's huge. And just keep it simple and direct. You know, like people try to get all salesy in their titles and stuff, and then wonder why they're paying five dollars a click. So. Like for instance, this was one that we did for dating. It says, browse my pics, 42, obviously 42, or the parentheses is the same thing that um, Facebook, when you actually look at people's profiles, so it looks like there's 42 more pictures. Browse my pics is a call to action. Um, if you look at it, it says, click here and let's hook up on true.com, it's association, I'm waiting, okay? so. Basically, everything here, it's got Facebook look and feel, it's got, with the 42, it's got a call to action in the title, and um, <clears throat> it's very simple, not very lengthy. And this one, what was the click-through on that one? I didn't even look. So this one got a click-through of 1.32, that's 1%, okay? So that is pretty unheard of on Facebook. Now, we couldn't run this one for very long because people voted they didn't like it, so whatever, but it did really, really well um, for the time that we ran it. Body text, um, this is the actual text of the ad. In this one, you should actually sell people on the results of the product, don't talk about the features, okay? What do I mean by that? So if you're doing a teeth whitening ad, don't say, you know, get whiter teeth or, you know, like, get rid of your cavities or, you know, whatever. You, you want to give people the results. You're going to feel better about yourself, you know, feel more confident about yourself, stuff like that. Call to action again, tell people what to do. And scarcity, if you can find a way to implement scarcity, better by now, act fast kind of thing. So for the body text for this one, you may recognize her, Debbie Phillips. She used to be an affiliate manager, I think, for Market Leverage. So she volunteered. We thought she would be perfect for this. It was a local Lincoln. Um, Lincoln, Nebraska dentist who wanted to get a whole, he's got four dental practices opening up a fifth and uh, we wanted to fill it for him. So basically um, Lincoln White Teeth was the best title that we found that converted uh, free teeth whitening for women 25 to 45, feel more confident about yourself, only five left, act now, okay? Huge click through ratio for a local ad, 0.46. By the way, Facebook says that anything above 0.01 is excellent, okay? So, 
Now, uh, we were targeting women ages 25 to 45 in Lincoln, Nebraska. The reason we were doing that is because the dentist came to us and he says that women from 25 to 45 book for the entire family. And also, if you can also target them and they have like an MBA or a postgraduate degree, that the odds of them having insurance is like through the roof. And even on a free teeth whitening, if he takes x-rays, it's worth like a thousand bucks to him, okay? So he knew what his demographics was, and anyone, if you do anything local like this, um, your guys are going to pretty much know their demographics. So Debbie um, got a 0.43 click-through ratio, and we were paying 13 cents per click. Pretty great. Um, now you have to keep in mind that a dentist values a new client somewhere around $8,000 a client, okay, for a new person, and he's paying 13 cents a click. So the ROI on that for him is pretty awesome. But he came to me and he's like, you know, Jeremy, I've been building up this practice forever and he used these girls with big hooters and I don't know if I want to represent my company like that. So I think we should use me because I'm the dentist, you know, and I want to use a picture of me. And I was like, sure, because you're the expert. So, um, <clears throat> so Brad, who is a really good friend of mine, you know, we used his picture and it had... Uh, basically 10 times the cost, um, 0 0.03, still not horrible, but you know, we're, we're targeting local Lincoln people, so that's not bad, but 10 times the cost. Now, I'm gonna give it up to Brad because, well, first of all, Debbie cost $14,000 for this campaign that we ran for, it's still running, but we ran it for about a year and a half. Um, Brad, for the same time, would have cost 140,000, okay? Just the image was the only difference, okay? So now giving Brad credit, it did have a 5% higher conversion, so like a little better quality, even though it costs a thousand times more, okay? So speaking of costs, um, that kind of transitions into the CPC, CPM talk. Uh, basically, Facebook operates, when you, when you make an ad, you are presented with the option to do a cost per click or a cost per thousand impressions. So cost per click is pretty simple. You pay every time somebody clicks. Cost per thousand impressions, every time your ad is run for a thousand times, you pay for that, whether you get a click or a thousand clicks. So whether or not you do it, Facebook operates off of a CPM back end, which means they get about, from my experience, about 23% CPM or 23 cents per CPM, that means that if you're not get, doing enough to generate 23 cents every thousand times your image is shown, it's gonna stop showing it, okay? No matter what you're doing CPC, if that's not working out for them because basically that's what they figure that inventory is worth. And that gets a little complicated and if you, any of you guys missed that, the DVDs that were given out by the way um, are supplied by Alan Baylor. That's part of a program that I sell and it actually goes a lot more in depth into even more fan pages and stuff like that. So um, Alan is in the room, he, pro he does all of our fulfillment, um, so he put a little thing in there and he made those for all you guys, so I thought that was really awesome of him. All right, so uh, basically you always wanna start CPC because you get to screw up. You get to make all kinds of ads and not pay for anything. Like right here, you can see um, I recently had an a ad I was running called Affiliate Legal Advice, blah, blah, blah. And you can see on one of these ads, like the first one right there, I love the laser pointer, it had 13,000 impressions, no clicks, and I paid nothing for that because that told me that my ad sucked. So next, you know, so these are all ads here that I barely paid anything for to find out that they sucked. So there's very few mediums that you get to just throw all these things at the open and find out if they're gonna work or not, all right? And that's why I love CPC stuff, because you can start out, if it doesn't work, it doesn't cost you anything, okay? If it does work, then you tweak it a little bit and you get it to where it does work, okay? So, the Shumay system is what we recently released. Um, the ad for it was the affiliate legal advice video. Um, I was targeting people who like affiliate, affiliate marketing, affiliate marketers, affiliate marketing, affiliate rockstar, or affiliate summit. I'm not sure what affiliate rockstar is, but had the word affiliate in it, so I went for it. All right. So uh, I basically bid a buck oh five on it because I just wanted to see what it would do. Um, that was our testing. This is actually the one that I found worked the best. Now this actually plays into something I didn't even talk about, which was emotions. So in this in this 
I couldn't really find a way to implement the uh, chicks get clicks uh, mantra, so I went for fear, which was basically like, you know, basically like not being prepared could cost you a ton of money and you could even go to prison, period, right? So I made an affiliate video that basically details all this stuff. People opted into that and then later we, you know, we tried to sell them a product, bottom line. Okay, so that one got uh, 0 0.03, three times better than what Facebook considers excellent. Um, you know, we spent uh, $720 on this one. It converted six times on a product that have an, has an average ticket price of about, you know, $550 or something like that. So this was very, very uh, effective. Now, we just needed more volume, but we only ran this for a week before. It was kind of like a, hey, let me do this because I'm doing this Facebook presentation kind of thing. But you can see, I mean, it's extremely profitable. So let's talk about some ninja techniques to lower costs and to make more money. Um, number one, we can use Facebook reporting. It's your best friend. And I'm going to show more on that. Um, frequency capping, Facebook frequency capping sucks. Okay, and, th and what do I mean by that? And that means that Basically, they will show the same exact ad. Like if you were to see my ad and then you click on it and then you go back to Facebook, you're gonna see that ad again. You can click on it again, you can go back to Facebook you can click, and I'm gonna pay every time for that, okay? That sucks, right? So frequency capping on Facebook absolutely sucks. Um, day parting is a huge one and day parting is something you'll hear about but basically what it means is if you're showing ads when nobody's clicking on it, then you're gonna pay a lot more for those clicks when they do happen. Because remember, Facebook works off that back-end CPM. All right, so this is basically the Facebook reporting, and as you can see here, it shows you all kinds of cool stuff. It shows you like, you know, what states people are clicking on, what states are seeing ads but not clicking on them, you know, all these different percentages, what age groups, you know, where they're from, um, you know, all kinds of great info. And if you missed that, I kind of slowed it down a little bit there, even though it's a little bit hard to read. But you can see females over here, um, even though they got only 0.14 of the impressions, they actually uh, got 0.23% of the clicks. So, you know, you can look at all this data and you can actually tighten down your targeting based on this data. Because if somebody from New York is getting shown your, you know, your, your ad all the time, but never clicking on it, then why are you showing your ad to people in New York? Okay, so this stuff is really, really valuable and it's very broad, but you can actually look at it and actually see. You can see down here the, the actual genders, 35 to 44, were shown 17% of the ads, but only clicked on 0.045, okay? So that age group is kicking my ass, right? And so I need to stop advertising to them. So all the data is here to help you zero in your campaign and really blow it out of the water. Responder profiles, um, I tried to get a screenshot on this, but it only goes back a couple days. So the responder profiles report that you can run in Facebook will show you everything about the people that are clicking on your ads. It'll tell you, and it groups it all as in importance. It'll say, you know, like if they like the family guy, if they read Harry Potter, if they do all this other stuff, what helps you, what that does, it, it helps you even more laser target in your audience because it's, if, um, and actually one of our biggest affiliates, the first time we released our Shoemaker system was a guy who would create these family guy ads and it said like, family guy loves shoe money or whatever, but he freaking killed it. He got so many ads and so many, so many stuff like that. It was our biggest affiliate. And just by making, he would like find out people who liked the A-Team movie. And it was like, if you love the A-Team, you've got to check out what makes people buy stuff. And I was like, dude, how are you doing this? This is crazy. But he, would, he had the time to actually drill down to all that stuff and use those images that people, for stuff that people really, really liked. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense, right? So the frequency capping, like I talk about, Facebook doesn't cap that we can tell um, how many times someone can view, on your, view your ad. I think Dr. David Klein did a, a test on this and he said that it's something like a minute, but I think they fluctuated a lot. Every time I've tested it, I've seen an image immediately and been charged for it. So um, the frequency capping sucks. Um, like you can see right here, out of these impressions of 1,465,000, only, um, you know, 477 people clicked. 
So out of one, so that means that the ad was shown to users an average of 65 times. Math seems a little weird, but basically it sucks. Um, so you want. So how do you prevent the frequency capping? Okay, because if you open it up big time, the same people are going to keep clicking on the same ads, and it's going to cost you more and more and more. And we find that all the time. We just ran a campaign recently. Out of 400 clicks, only 20 of them were from unique people on Facebook. Okay, and that's scary, right? Because you're paying for 400 clicks, but only 20 people. So that means that people just went back or another time saw it and clicked. So how do you prevent that? Well, the more tighter you can make your group, then the less they're gonna be shown your ad because you're competing against all these other people who are just blowing out their budgets, right? So you can kind of slow it down a bit by doing that. And you can do that just by all the different, you know, things that we just showed you that you can look up in your own reports with age, interests, you know, and people that are actually clicking on your ad. So, um, you know, with day parting, we talked about this quite a bit. Um, you know, analyze what time of the day you're getting clicks. Uh, you can use things as easy as Google Analytics, you know, to track this and then actually just send them to a, a, a page that has your Google Analytics code. Um, you can, if you really want to go the poor man's route, you could use Bitly, but you have to monitor it, you know, almost in real time to see that. Um, I would recommend just setting up your own system, you know, and, and checking it out if you can just hire a programmer to do it. But there's other ways to do it, and there's other solutions out there. Um, you never want to add, let your ad, ads run when they're getting clicks. If, if you look at a report like this one, you can see that, um, so out of 4,000 visits, you can see the, the distribution among times. Um, when we were running you know, dating ads in different countries, we would have to basically start them every night at like 10 o'clock and then pause them at 2 a.m. because the rest of the day was basically worthless to us. And when you actually flip over to CPM, you're going to see a much better improvement in your ad cost. So once you've got this whole thing drilled down, you've got your title, you've got your ad, you've got your tight-knit groups, everything's awesome. Um, now you can flip it over to CPM and so you're paying per thousand impressions and Facebook is going to give you a big discount for doing that because you're guaranteeing the inventory whether you get any clicks or not right and Facebook loves that so you're gonna get a big time discount but you've got to watch your ass because you can end up upside down super quick if somebody forgets to pause an ad and that ads running and nobody's clicking on it you still have to pay the same amount okay so at one point we had four full-time Facebook guys that did nothing but start and pause ads in countries all over the world. So we've, uh, we've toned it back quite a bit, but I mean, just because it's crazy. I mean, but that's, that's really blowing it out. I mean, you can, you can start very, very, very small and work your way up. So the key takeaways from this talk, um, it, patience is key. I mean, I can't tell you how many people I meet from Facebook who give up so easily because they tried it, their ads got denied, that's it, they, they're done, right? So you've got you've to email the affiliates and listen to their canned responses from wherever they're outsourcing now and, and just listen to them and work with them and just patiently get it going. And just the more you go, and my slides are cut off, but um, so I can wing it though. Basically, my computer fell asleep or something. So basically, um, you want to get your images everything. Okay, you want your images to stand out. Um, obviously, we found a lot of success um, using using the our independent study data and also the data from the Google test of cleavage, and um, that works really well for us. But really, you want anything that's going to stand out. So like, I have a red jumpsuit on. If I was standing in a crowd of you guys, everyone would be like, hey, remember the jackass in the red jumpsuit, you know? So, I mean, like, obviously you would, you want to stand out and you want to draw people's attention. Um, the title, you know, is, you know, accounts for about 10 to 15% or so. You want to be very, very specific in the title, um, very short. If you can do some sort of scarcity or call to action in the title, you definitely want to try that. Um, and the body text, you know, don't, don't get salesy and don't let some social media guru talk you into how important a conversation about your brand is on Facebook and all this stuff. You're, I mean, you're in the business to make money, okay? So if you can do it with your brand, that's awesome. If not, you can't. So at this point, um, so no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm going to go into question mode. So at this time, you know, if people have questions, 
Um, feel free to ask. There's supposed to be a slide that actually shows stuff, but I'm not sure what's going on with that. So you can just step up to the podium right here. It's really important they do that so that they can capture what you say on video. So when they distribute this, everyone will see what you ask. So not everyone rush up here at the same time. All right. Can you tell us a little bit more about the like and read on like uh, thing and what, where you have to keep your numbers from? Yep. Um, in the DVD that you have, we go into super deep, deep detail about that kind of stuff. So on your ad, your friends have the ability to like it. It's super powerful for Facebook fan pages because what we found is that when, for every click that we were paying for or for every fan that we were getting, we were getting, it was like something like for every 10 fans that we were getting, we were getting two for free. And, what, and how that works is because all, your, all these people see that you became a fan of this so that they see that and then all of a sudden then they go do it because they saw that you became a fan. And that's where the like thing really comes into play is that it allows you to you know, purchase a fan or a like and then for free it virally can go and you don't have to spend any more money or at least you get a lot of free clicks. Could you tell me how you can um, target uh, specific communities on Facebook? As an example, I was doing an ad and I wanted to target communities or other community groups that I knew were in my market space. Okay, like fan pages or? Uh, no, all right, so. Or interests. Specifically, um, there's a, a competitor, there's somebody else in my market space, uh -huh. and it's called Bay Area Kids something okay. or another. Okay, so I wanted to target the people that were on their Facebook page. So you can't do that unless you own, you're the administrator of that. I thought so. I was just hoping there was a way around it. No. Well, you, there is. I mean, you can get that person to give you an administration rights and then... Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. There's actually people that will actually buy Facebook fan pages because of just because of the advertising rights. There was a friend of mine who bought um, one who were people that were friends of Nike shoes. And there was like 600000 on there. And he purely bought the rights to that just to advertise Zappo stuff. And he did very, very well with it. So go ahead. Hey, Jeremy. Jay Berkowitz, Facebook.com slash Tangled Rules. What's your experience with uh, going on to Facebook fan pages versus off-site to landing pages on your own site? So I think Facebook fan pages are super powerful. One, because you can get all of the free. I mean, it's actually usually it costs you a little bit less to get the same amount of stuff. But you want to get people out of there and into your system as fast as possible. Like I said, Facebook loves it and they give you a discount for doing it because you're getting more people's data into their system and you're getting them to stay in Facebook longer, so they like it. But for you as the advertiser, you don't get to remarket to these people at all. You know, I mean, you can broadcast and do stuff like that, but I mean, you if you really wanna sell these people, you need their name and their email and their address, just like Chick-fil-A was doing, okay? So the best way to do it is you can actually implement a Weber or other email things or even your own thing inside of your fan page and do some sort of incentive and something like that to actually obtain the user outside of Facebook. Hey, John Rampton. Um, question for, uh, for us newbies to the Facebook advertising. You talk about uploading like thousands and thousands of ads. Are you, what program are you using or what are you doing to upload thousands of ads? Yep. So there's the FB Ads Manager, which Facebook will tell you will get you in trouble by using it. So use at your own discretion. I can tell you I've used it, I mean, for hundreds of thousands of ads over the years. Um, am I saying that right? You guys know it's FB Ads. It's been a long time since I bought it. So it's FB Ads Manager. I think it's 100 bucks, maybe 200 bucks. But it is by far the best money you'll ever spend if you're doing, because you can do all the split testing, targeting, everything I mean just and just you just let the computer run and you just come back later and you've got a zillion ads created one of our sites markets primarily to women is, is is the cleavage shot equally popular across both sexes yes it is there's no there's no difference at all yeah I mean but to answer your question just test it you know I mean if you don't get any clicks you don't have to pay for it but we found that there wasn't much difference and actually in talking to other women they were like yeah I click on that you know I mean so you know, it's just interesting. Yeah, question is on ad approvals. How How's Facebook now compared to March? And if you get your ad disapproved, what steps can you take to 
get them reapproved. So the, yeah, there was a couple months there where Facebook transitioned um, a lot of people from uh, their office in uh, Palo Alto to like I think it was Austin, Texas. And I'm not sure they're they're really worried about where the actual support is coming from now in, in terms of supporting affiliates. Um, I believe it's offshore because I get some really strange, maybe not English as a first language responses. What's that? Ireland. Ireland. Yeah, I know they relocated there, but I think they did it for financial reasons like Google did. So like, yeah. Okay, yeah. So basically like, I think that, so the ad approval, to answer your question, the ad approval process um, is still very painful, um, you know, but I've had a lot of success going back and forth with the, with the affiliates at Facebook.com. So, I mean, if, I think a lot of times they think just the initial disapproval um, really discourages a ton of people. Facebook says they have this huge history about, you know, the more ads disapproved, the harder time you're going to get approved. But I don't buy any of that crap. I think, like, every time you do it, I don't think they look at some big history thing. Because, believe me, nobody in here probably has had more ads denied than me. And so we still get ads approved on the first try sometimes, you know. But usually it takes a couple tries to get them through, especially, I mean, especially... Like our product is in the make money online space, okay? Whether I want to be or not, it is, you know? And even our training videos and stuff like that, even if they're free or whatever. So that right there is a massive red flag. You're evil, you're the worst person on the planet. So you have to battle that. Now most of you guys, you know, if you have your own products and stuff that are, I mean, it's like shooting fish in a barrel, you know, like the dentist thing, that's the easiest thing I've ever done. You know, I mean, like that was simple. We did a thing for a car dealership. It's simple, super simple, you know? So, and, and that's why, um, I talk about it, I know Ad Hustlers written about it as well, is the local affiliate marketing, driving leads to local businesses. Um, we've both been talking about it forever, but now you see these guys kind of recognize and we know what we're talking about and they're creating these products and selling them for $2,000 and they've never actually done it. They just kind of, but it's, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a huge opportunity doing a local thing, but so does that answer your question? It does. Okay. Yes. All right. So if that's it, I don't even know what time it is kind of buzz through. I'd like to thank everybody for coming. Um, thank you. Make sure you fill out your card. All excellence is the way to do it. And, um, and drop that off to a, a fit, one of these lovely ladies here. And check out the DVDs, because it's good stuff. And thanks, Alan, for doing all that. <laughs>